The Sagrada Familia will make a key investment to handle visitors and to finish its construction, including getting its first construction license 133 years after works began. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Barcelona's iconic and unfinished Sagrada Familia Basilica aims to improve the mobility and urbanization of its surroundings in the coming years. This should coincide with its completion, in theory, in 2026. On our show today, we'll get you the latest on the day's top story and also on the latest diplomatic moves in Madrid to fight the independence campaign. It's Catalonia's most popular tourist attraction, this despite not even being finished. The Sagrada Familia is supposed to be completed in eight years, coinciding with a century since the death of its architect, Antoni Gaudí. And getting ready for this long-awaited moment, the construction board wants to be able to handle the crowds better and make space in the neighborhood. The Sagrada Familia, Antoni Gaudí's still unfinished modernist masterpiece, is one of Barcelona's top tourist attractions. But this makes the central neighborhood around the church one of the most crowded in the city. Today, the Sagrada Familia pledged to invest 22 million euros towards public transport in the area to match the daily high intensity use. This is out of 36 million euros to be invested in the next decade, all to improve mobility, urbanization and public space upkeep. This was agreed between the Barcelona City Council and the Board of Construction, in the latest of a series of meetings which, noted the mayor, are important. Subrayar que aquí estem corresponsabilitzant-nos del patrimoni de la ciutat, d'una icona estimadíssima, dels impactes també que generen no? aquestes visites que tant ens agraden a la nostra ciutat. The Sagrada Familia has been under construction for 133 years so far, but did you know that for this entire time it hasn't had a proper license? A consensus was also reached on this today with officials pledging regularization by the first trimester of next year. The board maintains its completion date of 2026, but between now and then, the biggest dispute remains to be resolved. Part of Gaudí's original plans, if ultimately built, would mean demolishing residential buildings. A large stairway leading to what will be the church entrance is contested by local residents and the city and not touched upon in the latest agreement. The Catalan issue continues to be in the international arena. The country's foreign minister went on the BBC today, where he talked about what to do to gather support from other countries for the independence cause. Meanwhile, his Spanish counterpart makes moves in the opposite direction. The diplomatic conflict between Spain and Flanders isn't over yet. The Spanish ambassador in Belgium will meet with the Flemish leader in the near future. This comes after Madrid's foreign minister, Josep Borrell, stripped the Flemish delegate in Madrid of his diplomatic status. That was in response to some criticism from the Speaker of the Flemish Parliament, who had claimed that the jailed cattle leaders are political prisoners. With this incident still ongoing, Greece sacked its honorary consul in Barcelona at Spain's request over a France to the Spanish flag. Borrell announced it, and his office gave more details. The consul had taken part in the last National Day pro-independence demonstration. This, along with the obstacles Borrell has put in the way of Catalan's intention to reopen its foreign offices, led the Catalan government to react with irony. De momento está siendo el ministro de Exteriores que hace mayor proyección del movimiento independentista en toda Europa, censurando a tanto a diplomáticos, un hecho que no, que no, pasa, que no tiene precedentes en la Unión Europea. The international reactions to the Catalan issue seem important in Madrid, but also in Barcelona. In an interview with the BBC, the Catalan foreign minister said that until the pro-independence parties surpass 50% of support, they won't have any right to claim international support. Maragall also said that the Spanish Supreme Court is acting as a political power because it is keeping the leaders in pretrial jail. This comes a day before a meeting between one of the incarcerated officials, Esquerra head Oriol Junqueras, and left-wing Podemos head Pablo Iglesias. Why? Iglesias wants to persuade the pro-independence party to support the Spanish 2019 budget. It is something that the Unionist Ciudadans party finds humiliating for the country. 
No sé si serem l'únic país d'Europa on els pressupostos generals es debaten i es negocien a una presó. A mi em sembla que no és una bona notícia, em sembla que necessitem estabilitat. I Ati Iglesias' effort is unlikely to succeed because the pro-independence parties and government have already said no unless the socialists take steps to free the leaders or agree to a referendum. The stance was called populist by the Catalan socialist leader. The Catalan president, Kim Torra, spent a second day in Switzerland today after asking for an international mediation at a conference yesterday in Geneva. Today, he moved from the Francophone city to Zurich by train, and there he met the canton's president, Thomas Heininger. Both officials agreed that Zurich and Catalonia are comparable as countries, and Torra gave him a report on the Spanish police violence during last October's referendum. Before that, he had a quick meeting with Ana Gabriel, a former MP in exile seeking refuge from the Spanish judiciary, and he expressed mixed feelings about it. Com sempre, que, que surts a l'exili i que et trobes amb els companys que, que estan aquí, aquella sensació que tens no? de que aquí són dones lliures, mentre que eh, l'estat espanyol doncs, són, són a la presó. Some 600 international business people of the future visited companies and institutions in Barcelona. They are students of the city's top business schools, and 9 in 10 are from other countries. Their visit was organized by Barcelona Global, a private association of leading companies, research centers and entrepreneurs, together with some of these business schools. The aim is to boost the city's competitiveness. And on culture and heritage, we show you footage of a recent finding. It's apart from the medieval wall of Girona in northern Catalonia. It was discovered in the city's old town, already full of sites left from that period, and it includes a Renaissance archway with a date carved into it, 1577. Girona has one of the largest historic Jewish neighborhoods in the country, housing a cathedral of which the Gothic nave is the biggest in the world. And with this, we come to the end of our show. But not before showing you footage of an event to set the very first stone for a future center for children suffering from cancer. This emotional event was joined by a very prominent football figure in Catalonia. Thanks for watching, and see you tomorrow.